But I, I had a really good one that I wanted to ask you, mm-hmm. Brian. So what is one thing that Florida State can take advantage of against Notre Dame? I asked this on the Mark Rogers show, but you know, for our listeners here, what is one thing that Florida State can take advantage of against uh, the Notre Dame Irish? I think there's one thing on both sides of the ball. I, I think when you look at the Notre Dame offense, what I would do is is Notre Dame does not have an inexperienced offensive line. I pointed that out. Jack, you know, Josh Lug has nine career starts. Zeke Carell started in, in the Rose Bowl. Kane Madden's played two years. Jarrett Patterson play has is a two-year starter. But they mm-hmm. don't have any experience playing together. And that takes time. I don't care how many starts they have, it takes time for a bunch of for five guys who have never played together at the positions they're at to go out there and gel. If I'm Florida State, I'm not lining up trying to play big boy football with Notre Dame. I'm not. That doesn't mean you can't, but why? I want to get them turning. I want to get their guards thinking, okay, I'm doing this. Twi- this guy's coming across my face. Oh, there goes a linebacker on the other side. I'm stunning. I'm slanting. I'm attacking the gaps. I'm trying as best I can to get those big Notre Dame linemen to turn their hips because once an offensive lineman has to turn his hips, he's lost his power. He's lost his force. And I think that's what they got to do. And then, you know, picking those things up, guys, requires communication. You know, hey, look, me and you, we're working together here. Uh, when I see that guy crossing my face, I'm yelling out the the, 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 the words to you, the, whatever the taglines are to say, hey, this guy's coming across, right? That communication takes time. It takes experience. And doing it on practice is a whole lot different than doing it with 80,000 people in the stands. Or what is it, like 79 now in dope, whatever? Yeah, uh, so, like you, you know, it's it's a lot, right? It's more than what's at practice, okay? And you can play the chant all you want. It's not the same as 79, 80,000 screaming people. So I'm going to make that line communicate every snap. I'm going to make them have to turn and, and, and work on those adjustments and say, hey, if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to pick up all those things because we're going to try to, to, to make – I mean, because what can you do to stop Notre Dame, right? You create early down negatives, tackles for loss, incompletions, sacks. Get Notre Dame in those third and long situations where now you know what's coming. I think that's what they need to do on, on defense. Offensively, for me, it's just keep the game close. And this is what we talked about on our show is – if Florida State can stay balanced, this is a game. This is game one for Notre Dame, just like it is for Florida State. There's going to be game one mistakes. There's going to be game one mistakes, meaning I got B gap. Oops, I went to A gap, mm-hmm. and now Deshaun Corbin or you know Lawrence can kind of bust through that hole, and next thing you know, that mistake turns into a forty yard gain. If Florida State can keep this game competitive, and and make it a seven to ten point game then you can stay balanced. That's where those big plays can open up. What Notre Dame wants to do is jump on Florida State early and get them out of that balance. Because if this becomes a game where Florida State's got to throw the ball all day to beat Notre Dame, they're going to beat Notre Dame. And it probably won't be close. If they can stay balanced, then they have a chance to, 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 to me, rip off those big plays that they're going to need. They're going to need turnovers, and they're going to need big plays on offense to keep it close. And, and again, you look at Florida State last year. This is also something we talked about on our show. This is an offense that ran for 199.9 yards per game last year, despite ranking in the 100s in tackles for loss allowed and sacks allowed, right? To average that, what to be the number, I think, 23rd best team in the country in yards per attempt, despite the fact you were one of the worst teams in the country and giving up negatives, says a lot about what this offense can be when they're eliminating the negatives on their side. And so I think that's the thing that you have to try to do is you got to be able to keep hammering that nail because eventually someone's going to make a mistake and that mistake can turn into a big play. But if you're down 20 and you can keep running all you want because you're not enough game, there's not enough time on the clock for you to come back from 20, just keep running the football. And so I think that's mm-hmm. the thing that Florida State needs to do is keep hammering that nail and eventually someone's going to make a mistake and that's when you can rip off a big play. 